Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. Okay, everybody, I am so excited to welcome my my friend who also loves thrillers, especially early 90s erotic thrillers. Um, there's definitely some sexy stuff that we're going to talk about, which I kind of forgot existed in Single White Female. But everybody, welcome back to the show. My good friend, Tariq Flanagan. Hello, Tariq. Hello there. Thank you for having me back. I, like you said, give me a 90s thriller and oh. I... We can talk all night. So thank you for having right? me. Thank you for having me. Back. Oh, yes. I am so happy. Thank you for giving me your time away from your beautiful family to talk about these two crazy women. Well, I mean, one crazy woman so crazy. and one, one you know, really crazy. D- one really crazy. You know, and I forgot. We'll get into it, but I forgot. Wow. I mean, it is almost like smutty. You know, it's almost yes. like okay. This is getting a little like lower level you know but it still maintains that good 90s thriller but i'm so happy you're back if you guys might remember Tariq was on oh god i can't believe that was already so long ago already back in january we talked about that was yeah that was like mid january we last spoke on here you came on the show to talk about uh the hand that rocks the cradle another great Oh, but you know, isn't this so, I love that this is your niche on this podcast because you just love a good early nineties thriller where two women are just beating each other up. Yep. Sign me up. What's the next one going to be? Sign me up. Right? I know. We have to come up with a list, you know, because, because they have to be just slightly, maybe a little problematic. I know we were thinking, you know, uh, the hand that rocks the cradle could have been a little problematic. I feel like single white female probably is, although it's just so fun. I kind of honestly... I'm I'm so close to it. I kind of can't even see if there are any problems. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. It's yes, just such completely. a fun, like ride, right? So a fun ride. Um. Okay, you were just in P Town with your fam, and you also need to fill us in about this awesome video that I saw you posted. Uh, uh yeah. almost like short documentary on on you and Jeff and the yeah. kids. Tell me about it. It was really yeah. The, a friend of ours knew that. Um, it was through U.S. Bank that they were looking for a family to kind of share their pandemic story or their, you know, something that was, um, that grew out of the pandemic or something that was hard for them during the pandemic. So we shared that we were adopting through the pandemic and they, they just loved that story. They, they loved being able to tell that story. So yeah, they came out to our house on a Saturday morning and they filmed for the, you know how it goes. They filmed for the entire day. I was going to say, it was just funny because I, it was, it was a full thing. Like, and my husband is like, he's seeing, you know, the truck come in with the cameras and the lights. It was the full, the full setup. Um, But it was great. Like they, we did the sit down interview and then they, you know, they, they had us all throughout the house feeding the kids breakfast and showing us out in the backyard and, um, so it was just, it was, I, I think they did a really great job. Like the finished product, I was like, wow, they did a really good job. And it's just really cool to have that video just to kind of have a concise version of our story. Yeah. So nicely told in this little package, you know, I'm just, it, it's something that's really cool to be able to, to oh, have yeah. for the future as well. Did you see anyone you knew? Like, you know, since the TV film world is so small. Yeah, no, we were. Ta- I talked to a few guys, and we had like yep. connections, and like, oh, I've worked at that company, or I know somebody that worked at that company. Yep. Um, nobody I knew, you know, firsthand. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is such a small business that we there were there were a few kind of connections there. That's funny. Um, so yeah, it was, and it was just funny for us TV people to be on the other side of uh-huh. it, just like watching it all happen oh, and being yeah. the person being interviewed uh-huh. and, you know i know um, after all so yeah, your years great. of interviewing of and like can you do that again can you right. say that again now you have to do exactly it. exactly it, you know it probably right, made right. you and so it probably made you a better like producer to see right yes. like oh i thought you were gonna say a better guess i'm like oh, yes, it oh that, a that, that too well. yes definitely <laughs> oh yes he's ready for any podcast so, any interview ladies i was and like gentlemen. just 
right. Just come on, just throw it at me. And I'm remembering, Tariq, so, isn't this yeah, it was your fun. birthday month? Your birthday's later in August. It is my birthday wow. month. Wow. Yes. Oh my gosh. What so, a special time to be on the... release date rewind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let the celebrations begin. <laughs> well, happy birthday month. Happy B Day to you. Coming Thank you up. so much. Now, Thank we are you. going to rewind 30 years ago. All right. So go back to your early 90s looks and style and vibes because we are going back to August 14th, 1992. That is when, almost exactly uh, 30 years ago this week, the 14th is coming up in a couple days. Yeah. That is when Single White Female came out wide and changed changed filmmaking, changed stilettos, that's for sure. <laughs> my God. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yes. Oh, my God. Um, so let me, <laughs> let me set the scene for you, Tariq, and feel free to chime in. I want to hear your thoughts. This is what was going on at this time 30 years ago, okay, in entertainment. So you're a Broadway guy. We were just talking about theater before we started. On Broadway, Miss Saigon was the most popular Broadway show that year, followed by, of course, Phantom of the Opera, the show that, isn't that, isn't that still on? Yeah, How? it just won't die. It really will not die. Oh, wait. But as you get to... Look, we're yeah. talking about it in there. <laughs> that's like, so funny. See, like, yeah. That's that's my husband's pick. That is oh. not my pick. I would do an X. X. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. I was going to say, you can't shade it if there's the... Po- I'm looking right at the mask, but okay, that's, that's a Jeff I pick. can shade it because, yeah, it was not my selection. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Um, actually, some friends are going to see that next week, and they asked me if I wanted to go for a friend's birthday, oh, and I'm like... wow. No, yeah. I, can't, I can't. For a friend's birthday, no. for maybe for a friend's birthday back in 1992, but <laughs> not now. On the music side, End of the Road by Boys to Men was the number one song. And that's one of those songs, <laughs> when it comes on, I'm like, I can sing this. Like, in my mind, I'm like, I yes, can do this. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> I'm going to sing this part, and then I can yeah. sing this part, and it, I'm sure it doesn't sound as great as they do, uh, but yeah, that is a, yeah, that's a good Such one. a that's good a good ballad, song. right? Yeah. On the TV side, mm-hmm, on the TV mm-hmm. side, in a couple weeks after this, late August, we were about to get the premiere of Martin, the Martin Show, starring Martin Lawrence, which I remember was a yes, big comedy yes. for a long time Huge. on Fox. So we were about mm-hmm. to get that. And then on the movie side, these were popular okay. movies at the time, leading up to single white females release. Of course, Death Becomes Her, which I just talked about on this pod. Love that one. You've seen it, I'm yes. sure. Right? So good. I, I, I think so. <gasps> Like, oh, I know. I, I, wow. I, you and Jeff will be upset with me. I think we've watched it. Like, oh. that's that's the one. Okay. Wait, don't tell me. Wait, I'm, I just shouldn't do, do this it. with you because you're going to be so it. upset with me. Um, Goldie Hawn and Meryl Good. Streep. Okay, thank God, everyone. Okay, yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Bruce Willis. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. So I think I've seen parts <gasps> of it. Parts? Okay. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> And watch that, like, ASAP. <laughs> like, put the kids to bed or okay. keep them up. They'll have a good time. And check that out because it's so right. good. It really is so good. So that was a big deal. Death okay. Becomes Her had just come out at the end of July. Unforgiven, on the flip side, a movie I don't really care about. Oh, yeah. Western. I no. think Clint, Clint Eastwood, maybe. That was Clint a, Eastwood. Right? Yes. That was a big deal. I think. Um, then we had some thrillers. That. We had some more thrillers. Raising Cain, which I don't think I've ever actually seen. That was with um oh my gosh I his, I can picture him, Third Rock from the Sun oh my gosh um John uh, John Lithgow yes. uh huh uh huh sounds familiar but I I don't can't think I it. ever saw it but I remembered the poster well okay. like it's him looking okay. he's like a bad guy okay. we had unlawful entry was pretty popular I sort of about yes. to like leave its like run in the theaters but I remember you mentioned that okay. one last episode Mm -hmm. right so this was like the heyday of those good simple straightforward you know thrillers so that one that was with kurt russell right and madeline stowe i think ray liotta and madeline Stowe. yes Mm -hmm. we had that Mm -hmm. oh we had a league Mm -hmm. of their own not a thriller but a great classic as well that Uh i talked about but a good one and you just talked about that too Mm -hmm. yeah just did that one so those were all out (laughs) and how funny you probably i have a feeling you probably didn't see this or maybe you did it's a fun movie i feel like jeff definitely did this movie came out the same day as another movie i'm going to talk about this month on the podcast stay tuned did you ever see stay tuned with john ritter really wacky comedy i don't know this one super super kooky Mm -mm. so that came out the same day as this obviously single white female was way more popular and more successful but there you go (laughs) 
But so, Tariq, now I'm going to throw it over to you. In your own words, for anyone who is not yes. sure what this movie's about, tell us what what is the story? What's the plot of Single White Female? What happens? Oh, okay. So, Single White Female is about a young woman, mm-hmm. a young mm-hmm. woman, Bridget, <laughs> Bridget Fonda, who uh, needs a roommate, basically. There's some things that went down with her her boyfriend, became her ex-boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So she needs a roommate. So she interviews a couple of, of young ladies. And then Jennifer Jason Lee shows up and just lets herself oh, in the yeah. house and <laughs> charms her way into that spare bedroom. I mean, all she had to do was <laughs> just then, fix a leaky faucet. And <laughs> all she did get that monkey wrench out and get under that. <laughs> yeah, just open the cabinet and do her twisting mechanism and wow she got exactly. the she got the room yep but little did bridget poor bridget fonda did not know that she was letting a crazy person oh, into her apartment God. her large dimly lit <laughs> scary apartment her, yes way. like that's a whole nother totally true i'm so glad you said so, like, that um, the whole movie i'm like can someone turn some <laughs> lights on in this place please? i know you know it's funny because bridget fonda first of all is such a babe so dang cute at this time so mm-hmm. thin, cute, sexy, very, as we see, very fashionable with all of her weird, you know, like very yes. shiny and like out there clothing. But I'm like, girl, get a headboard, get some sort of actual like bed stand <laughs> because it's just two mattresses on top of each exactly. other. You are not in college anymore. It's and you're so, so right. Turn so on bad. a few lights, a nightlight, a lamp. I mean, every every scene is very It's like... almost like a noir. Yes. You oh, know? absolutely. Which I, I mean, it works. But then it's also frustrating. I know we're jumping ahead slightly here when I say this, but it's funny because then as things really ramp up in the movie, which, oh my God, it's just absolutely iconic. I actually feel like the movie gets brighter when things are getting darker yes. uh, emotionally. Right, you you're know? right. So I, yeah, I don't know if yeah. that was intentional, yeah. but yeah, there's a lot of moody lighting, a lot of blues and reds, which I mean, it looks great. A lot of know? blues, but it's also like... Yeah, okay, it's also yeah. like... Girl, you, you have a, it seems like, I mean, you're like a consultant, you're a graphic designer, fashion person, you're carrying right, around like right. a little computer like briefcase that I've never seen ever. What an interesting gadget, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Literally, right. it has like a little briefcase handle and it's almost like an uh, the first generation like iPad or something. It's sort of like a... Like an iPad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like first laptop. Yes. Yeah, So, exactly. I mean, you, you yeah. definitely are connected. Let's turn on <sighs> some lights. But yes. And we just, we learn very quickly that Hetty is low cray. Hetty's a little crazy in the Hetty. Um, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So then we, we watch that all play out. Hedra. What a Hedra, spooky name. Because like... then we realize her name's Ellen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Hedra. Where'd you, where'd you get Hedra? <laughs> <laughs> We're like, okay. You know? In this city, on this street, in this apartment. Hi, are you Allison Jones? I'm Hedra Carlson. Hedra, that's unusual. (sighs) When can you move in? An ad for a roommate brought a stranger into Allison's life. You know, this had actually been a... I hadn't rewatched this movie in a while. I remember I definitely saw it as like a kid, teen on TV and loved it. Oh my God, fascinating. And right. uh, I'll never forget when Hetty slash Ellen, I think it's Ellen, right? Yeah. When she is choking Allie in the elevator and it really looks like Bridget Fonda is like losing consciousness, is, right? Yes. I remember yes, as a kid yes. that scene and um, God, the really disturbing, uh, the, cli- the creepy client with glasses who uh, molests uh, Allie, Bridget Fonda, Oh, my mm-hmm. God. And then he's making right. her turn around. Ar- well, she says, I'll turn around because we know she's got a plan. And he's starting to, like, undo his pants. Right. Seeing that as, like, a teen, I was very disturbed. That was very realistic. Yes, you're like, this yes. is disturbing. So I'll never forget that. But so yep. I had yep. seen this movie for the first time, you know, kid teen. And then I know I rewatched it early in college with some friends, like, in the dorm room. And we were screaming and, like, okay. living life. Okay. But when's the last time – I think that was the last time I saw the whole movie in full. When's the last time you saw this? Well, <laughs> well, as I was re-watching – looking to rewatch yeah. this movie for, for this chat here, I was trying to see where I could – you know, what, mm-hmm. what streaming service I could watch it on. And I discovered that we had actually already purchased this <laughs> Of course this you movie. did. Oh, my God. <laughs> So this tells you a lot about what's happening in this house. Like, I don't know when it was, but I mean, this had to have been within the last 
four yeah. to five years, okay. I'm guessing. We purchased it. So instead of like renting it and you know having a 24 hour watch, we yeah. purchased it. So it lives in our streaming <laughs> library great. now. So I was like, oh, perfect. Oh my God. You know. So yeah. So we this that that kind of paints the picture of of our thoughts on this movie and the genre and. Um, when did you first see this movie? Do you remember? I don't know. I don't remember actually. And when hearing that it was 30 years ago, I'm like. Yeah what you know like i i just i forget yeah. that it's been that long so i really don't remember the first time that i watched right. it or where i was or what age i was i don't I, yeah. I don't know i'm not sure um but it stuck with you yeah. which is all that matters this is actually based on and i didn't realize until this latest rewatch it's based on a novel which i kind of like want to check out i'm like how was that like written in book form yeah. but so the novel's name it was a 1990 right. 1990 book two years earlier before the film came out called SWF single white female seeks same written by John Lutz. And so they just, they just uh, kind of cut out okay. the seek same and kept it SWF single white female. Now right. real quick Tariq, I'd love to get your input because I had never in 30 years ever thought about this, but so I, I rewatched it this time with Greg who had never seen it. I'm like, I cannot believe you have never oh. seen this masterpiece. I, I on Saturday. Oh my hey, gosh. He, he was floored. He was a little bored every now and then. And I do, I do have to say it does <laughs> slow down here and there. Also, we were pausing a lot. And also we were doing a deep dive into Bridget Fonda's life, which is really interesting. Uh, have you like Googled her? I've heard. I have not, but we were talking about this recently with some friends, and I need yeah. to do that because I mean, yeah, I've, I've I, heard that. I it's had known that she thing. has yeah. not acted in twenty years. She she stopped acting. Her wow. last role was a TV movie like The Snow Queen or The Ice Queen for Hallmark in two thousand two, and then soon after she got into a car accident, which she was fine, but she hurt herself, and then she married Danny Elfman, major music you know film music composer oh, um so yeah. i think she just was like i'm good i guess she always felt pressure um you know being a fonda and all that which makes sense because of the name yeah right, because of exactly. the name and living up to yeah. the name i mean i think she's great she did great stuff back in the day so it's it's sad because it's like wait do you remember the movie point of no return you know it's so funny because that came out a year after this and i don't think i ever saw it but Tariq, i will always remember that poster with her in like that moody lighting with the and gun the, yes like the, she has that like gun. uh-huh it's so Is good it? that's one of those movies i will watch like i don't know if it's that good yeah today yeah but i used to love that movie oh um, i'll have to check so it check out. it out oh yeah, yeah. You should check it out i just love that she was very much an early 90s like it girl but it's sad i looked her up and so get this. So the last time she was seen in public was with Danny Elfman in 2009 for the Inglorious Bastards movie premiere. I guess maybe Danny oh. Elfman did the music or or she yeah. I know she she worked on um oh my gosh, Jackie Brown with Quentin Tarantino. So maybe right. she was just yes. there to see Inglorious Bastards to support him. Uh, and she's so hot in that movie, right? And so last time she was spotted was 2009 until apparently earlier this year on her birthday. And, and I heard she was, like, photos. unrecognizable. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Greg and I were like, that's not her. This is, like, some dumb site saying it's her. But all these pictures yeah, cool. show her, and wow. it. I that's mean, I don't want to say, you know, oh, I feel bad, because maybe she just, you know, uh, is happy with how she is. But right. she is unrecognizable. Oh, wow, yeah, she and is. we were so so occasionally think, we yeah, would pause I mean, the movie because we just were also like doing deep dives on her and like trying to really figure out is that really her or are, are the are these sites confused right. you know these paparazzi confused so we would occasionally pause it and so Greg was like it does feel a little long I'm like well we are also looking at gossip sites while watching the movie I mean right. it's not really you know <laughs> right, it, it, right. we were supposed to watch this straight through like as a normal person would well hold on I, I, we have to talk about two things before we talk about moments that could be. We yeah. talked about Bridget a little bit just now. Can we just talk about Jennifer Jason Lee for a moment? Oh, so, Tariq, say so it, say it. It's, <laughs> well, it's so, as I was watching it, I laughed because Jeff, my husband and I, Jeff, have always lovingly considered Jennifer Jason Lee to be a little cuckoo. Oh. <laughs> in a loving way. It, I am right there and with I'm, you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did it start with this movie and this role? Right. Like, I don't, it was like, wait a minute, like, where does the kookiness come from? Maybe yeah. it's this movie. Like, and I was trying to remember what other <laughs> movies she's done. 
Yeah. That could have, you know, this been the moment where laugh. she seemed crazy to us. So, she yeah, is I just, so I feel kooky. Like she is so cool. She I always picks these agree. roles where you're like, yeah. oh, okay, crazy. She's, you know. she's always a little deranged. Or if it's just like a drama. Like, did you ever see back in, oh gosh, maybe the late 2000s, maybe like around 2007, she was in, which I actually kind of liked, Margot at the Wedding. It was like a quirky drama with Nicole Kidman and Jack Black. Yeah. Do, I think does that Jeff ring a bell? Has, uh, Jeff obviously, Jeff has seen it. that movie. I don't, yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. You I mean, said Nicole Kidman. He's definitely seen it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he was there opening weekend, yeah. right? But um, yeah, exactly. it's fine. You know, it's it's decent. I liked it, but it's not something... I've only seen it once, you know? But even in a movie like that, right. where it's just a quirky drama, dramedy, she still feels like, why do I feel like you're going to pull a knife and, like, <laughs> try to kill exactly. Nicole and Jack right. Black, you know? So it, there's always that's something that's like, a little And that's my thing. Like, did it start off. with this or right. was it like, is that just her? Well, you know? well, that's a good question. And hold hold your thought, the other thing you want to talk about, because now I'll talk about them real quick. Okay, where they were. Okay. So on the, ca- on the cast side, the actress side, so we just were talking about Bridget Fonda. She was only 28 at this time. She, as we wow. know, we already said she was a Fonda. So, you know, her dad, her, she's, she's related to... Um, Jane Fonda. I almost called her Janet, but I'm losing my mind. Jane Fonda. You like so, that? This is I'm like, that feels weird. She had just done Doc Hollywood, a movie called Iron Maze, mm. Godfather Part 3, which I admit I still haven't seen that one. Had no idea she was in that. No. Right? Mm-mm. And then also Frankenstein Unbound, which I know you like some scary stuff too. That movie looks crazy. I've never seen oh, it. I've heard about it. it. It's like super monstery Frankenstein. So she was, I think, the female okay. lead in that. So she had done that. Jennifer Jason Lee, she was 30, just a couple years older than Bridget. She had just done Backdraft, which was a big deal in 1990 oh, or 91. Oh, we recently. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she's one of the wives. So that's kind of surprising because, again, she is so kooky cuckoo to us that like i don't think i would really ever cast her in just like a normal like wife role yeah you know exactly exactly but so she had some major success with that that was a big deal she was in buried alive which i do remember apparently it was a tv movie but um she, it was a very dark weird twisted like kind of comedy horror movie and she okay. had just also done Last Exit to Brooklyn, which is, was a little bit more gritty. Right, definitely and of course, gritty. That's the right she, word, gritty. Right? And, of course, she, like, really had her claim to fame in the 80s. Also having a big uh, milestone anniversary this month is Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That turns oh. 40, I believe. So that was, like, her f- breakout. Yeah, you know what? You're not alone. I've seen clips. I've seen, like, the... Phoebe Cates naked in the pool. You know, I know that's oh, a moment. that's that movie. Okay. That's that movie. Yeah. And I know everyone's in it. Um, Blonde, Sean Penn, you know. But um, yeah, I've yes. never seen the whole thing either. So I'm glad I'm not alone. But I know she was like the cute, wholesome girl in that. So she had right. already, you know, been doing some big stuff. So yeah, I don't know when she started kind of like getting a little like almost like constantly a little drunk or like a little exactly. hunched over. A little right? off. Yeah. Yes. Hold on. I have a... Ooh. I have a special guest. We're we're currently talking about crazy, lovingly crazy Juliette Lewis. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> damn it, Ju- Juliette Lewis, Jennifer Jason Lee. We're currently talking about Jennifer Jason Lee uh-huh. and how we consider her a little cuckoo. Of and did it start with this movie, Single White Female, or was no, she? No, she's a child actress. Oh, so, yeah, okay, she's, all right. She's she's a ask child ask child Jeff. Star. When did? Yeah, I can't hear you. When? It's great. When did, <laughs> when did Jennifer Jason when did, Lee start getting weird, Jeff? Jennifer Jason Lee start getting weird. <laughs> any any thoughts? I mean, it was it was probably that. Probably that. Oh, okay. Probably, probably Single White Female was okay. one of the early ones. Good. And then she was she was in the anniversary party. And then John she was coming. And, and now like, he's naming her whole biography. <laughs> yeah. you know, a- so ask him <laughs> ask him if he saw Margot at the wedding anything. opening weekend. So I gotta, I, <laughs> yeah, he, did you? <laughs> to go? He wants to know if you were at Margot at the wedding opening weekend. <laughs> uh, maybe not opening weekend, but definitely <laughs> that week. Sure. Yeah, I was okay. There. I was like, Ooh, what is this about? Sure, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> Someone. Beautiful on you. Who shares. What's well, kind of fun having a girlfriend again? Someone. Do you guys know when you'll be back? Uh, no, it's kind of an anniversary tonight. Really? Who cares? Where the hell have you been? <gasps> Making me feel like I'm 16 years old here. <laughs> Real quick, we have to talk about Hottie McHotterson. I think he is very pretty. Steven Weber, what do you think? Would would you Steven would Weber? you tap that? I okay. I don't hate yeah. it. Okay. I, I didn't think that. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't. I mean, 
<laughs> I was like, and that never crossed my mind, honestly. The whole time I was watching him, I was like, what is he from? Wings? Like, yes. what was the show that he was He in? went on to do Wings, <laughs> okay. yep. Uh-huh. To a lot of TV. Yeah, and I mean, he's done theater. He's attractive. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. he doesn't look, yeah. at, at this age, he was, he was 31, which makes sense. Oh, wow, okay. You know, but like, it's funny, because back then, everyone just looked older, you know? Like, he seemed mm-hmm. almost like... 30 i don't know eight or nine or so but you know he also bears all in this movie he's, yes those yeah scenes. well there was definitely a moment where i was like Ooh, oh oh okay. oh yeah oh definitely there was um, a, a googling moment for sure yes absolutely <laughs> right but so yeah he had done lots of tv <laughs> yes. like we said and and theater and everything but this definitely like kind of made him like leading man status and he has a crazy end to his uh to his character's life and it's interesting did you, I feel like, did you and Jeff just watch, maybe Jeff posted, that new Netflix show, Uncoupled, with Neil Patrick Harris, or no? Yes. Any good? We did. No? Yeah. Okay. We we watched, I should say, we got through two episodes. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't necessarily know if we're going to continue. Okay. That show is written and produced by the screenwriter of this movie, Don Ruse. Isn't that random? Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's, that is very he's done lots of TV. I think he also wrote for Younger um, for a while. Which is... Which I you love, that. right? Yeah, I, I remember you liked that one for yes. sure. Um, but yeah, and he, he's done some interesting stuff, Don Roos. This was his first um, film screenplay. Uh, he had mostly done TV okay. up until this, but then he went on to do like... Other like kind of gritty stuff, like the opposite of sex with Christina Ricci. If you remember that one in the late nineties, oh, yeah. he yeah. did some other kind of random stuff. But yeah, I was sort of surprised to see his name on a Neil Patrick Harris comedy because I mean, I guess it's like the gay thing, yeah. you know? Because I'm pretty sure he's definitely right, you right. know, uh, queer, you know. But so yeah, a little fun fact yeah. there. And then last person to talk about is this was directed and produced by Barbette Schroeder. Very interesting name. Right. He had just yes. directed. Did you ever see with Glenn Close Reversal of Fortune? I didn't see that one. I don't think I have. But that wasn't that the Oscar nominated movie? I th- wasn't he? I think so. Didn't he get a nom for that? Maybe. Yeah. He might have. You might be right. Yeah. I think he I did. remember that was a big one. That was a big deal for sure. It was her and maybe Jeremy Irons. I forget. Yeah. But so he did that. Yeah, that sounds right. I was going to say that. Right? Maybe. And then he okay. I I know his later movies better. He went on to direct Did you ever see another Pretty good thriller, I thought, before and after with Meryl and Liam Neeson in the mid 90s. Did you see that one? No. Okay. Where their uh-huh. son, I think, accidentally kills someone and they're like trying to like cover it up. That was okay. Oh. And then Murder by Numbers with Sandra Bullock a few years after that. Yeah. Brian Gosling. I remember that yep. one. So he's done some thriller stuff. Yeah. Okay. But so okay. Th- those are the major players, where they were, okay. what they were up to at this time. <laughs> She's a lunatic, Ellie. She needs me. There are two scenes in this movie that are, like, iconic for this movie, but then also just, like, iconic moments, period, in, yes. like, I guess, Pop in culture. 90 thriller yeah. world. One, which you mentioned, is the stiletto. Oh. Like, when she, Hetty, yeah. takes that shoe with that point on it and... Oh, yeah slams it into his eye like that oh, is yeah. like that's one of those like every time i think about the movie i think about that scene and then the other scene i always think about is the moment she walked heady again walks down the stairs with the haircut like oh it's god. like oh my god like, Tariq. that like i crazy and I, crazy. This is, I, I just kept thinking like whenever you watch any of these movies but for some reason especially with this one i just kept thinking to myself what would you do oh, if my God. you were Bridget Fonda? Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. Mm-hmm.